Good morning, senior doctors, friends, and colleagues. Today's CME is on the recent advances of radiation oncology. As a first speaker, we have Dr. Nikhil, who is going to brief you about the changes that have taken place over the last two to three decades. Anyway, Dr. Nikhil. Before the era of computers, we used to give treatment based on body landmarks. But with the advent of computers, we have we have, we have the ability to focus the radiation beam onto the tumor and spare the critical organs. To enumerate, I welcome Dr. Nikhil. Very good morning to one and all. Myself, uh, Nikhil Gopi, Senior Registrar in the Department of Radiation Oncology. At the outset, I would like to thank the organizers of this meeting uh, to, for giving me this opportunity to speak in front of this gathering. The topic allotted to me uh, to talk on is on the recent advances in uh, radiation techniques. I will begin with this slide, which might quite be familiar to you all. This is a uh, high school slide of uh, electromagnetic spectrum, which type uh, radiation based on their frequencies. The far right end radiation, that is X-rays and gamma rays, which are ionizing radiations, are most often used in uh, radiation therapy for medical radiotherapy. How does radiation actually act? How does it uh, kill tumor cells? It might be quite obvious. It, uh, radiation damages the tumor cell DNA. Here I have enumerated various mechanisms by, by which it does that, which is uh, probably quite irrelevant to the body in here today. The crux of the matter is that it damages tumor cell DNA. But as a matter of fact, the damage to DNA is quite not selective with radiation, by which I mean that if the radiation is directed to a tumor, it will amount to tumor cell destruction, which in turn will result in tumor control. And if the radiation is directed towards a normal cell, it will amount to normal cell destruction and in turn result in complications. So the aim of modern radiotherapy is to precisely direct radiation towards the tumor and minimally so towards normal tissues. Regarding type of radiation, broadly, Radiation is typed into two, teletherapy or external radiation where the source is outside the body. World over delivered usually using two types of machines, telecobalt machine or the modern day linear accelerators. And second one, brachytherapy, which is internal radiation or the source, which is a radioactive source is in close, close proximity with the tumor. The radiation delivery techniques in the treatment delivery has certain steps. Primarily, we need to locate the tumor as well as the critical organs. Once we have done that, we need to generate a plan which would satisfy our goal. Our goal will be a very good therapeutic ratio, by which we mean that maximum dose is delivered to the tumor and minimum to the critical organs at risk around the tumor. Once we have done that or we have a very good plan, before delivering the treatment, we verify its accuracy. Once the accuracy is confirmed, we deliver the treatment. The steps are as simple as that. In the pre-computer planning era, RT fields were marked, mostly used on bony landmarks, that is X-ray based planning. But the problem with such kind of planning is that we cannot quantify what dose the tumor is receiving or what dose the normal organ at risk is receiving. But with computer-based planning, the three-dimensional conformal radiotherapy, or 3D CRT as we call it, CT scans came into being, tumors, critical organs, etc. could be well delineated, beam shaping with help of multi collimator help us to target tumor and spare organ at risk, and specifically 
and precisely quantify what dose each point is receiving. There have been various technological advances in the field of radiotherapy, but basically all these advances can be broadly attributed to three main reasons. Primarily, from the old age of X-ray based planning, we have come forth to the CT, MRI and PET based planning. Treatment planning computers have become far advanced these days. These days, the computers have been able to make calculations in the tune of 100,000 calculator calculations per minute, absolutely or highly precise, precisely predict dose deposition in each and every point, and treatment delivery machines has also advanced. The newer machines and high-end MLCs has made dose uh, planning uh, this part. But the imaging modality, the most often used in the field of radiotherapy is uh, CT-based planning. There are certain differences between a CT scan, planning CT scan machine, which we call a CT simulator, from a diagnostic CT scan machine. Some of them are that it has a wider board, a flat couch for the patient to lie, and it uses fiducial markers and uh, lasers for aligning the patient in the perfect position. And the most important of it is that CT scan in a CT simulator is taken in treatment position with adequate immobilization. And whenever we are in the back step with tumor localization, as we know that CT scan, uh, now soft tissue uh, differentiation is quite inferior, there is also a facility for fusing images, co-registration we call it. MRI and PET CT in a similar position can be co-registered with CT scan and feel that that's it. Why do we need high-end treatment planning computers? As you would have rightly assumed, uh, radiation beam undergoes attenuation once it enters the body. So it is not possible to keep uh, measuring devices inside the patient body and measure what point is receiving what kind of dose. So we need highly predictive computer algorithms or softwares which would predict based on biological models, what dose will be received in each and every point. Such kind of dose calculation is essential for dose modification and higher local control. Now, coming to the advancement in with respect to newer machines, we have come from the era of telecobalt machine to the era of modern linear accelerators. We have come from the uh, era of non-field shaped uh, radiotherapy to the era of field shaping with multi collimators and from the old conventional radiotherapy to the high-end radiotherapy techniques like intensity modulated radiotherapy, image guided radiotherapy, highly ablative stereotactic radiotherapy and this time in this, this era we are able to hit even a moving target with high accuracy based on four-dimensional CT scan or respiratory gated radiotherapy techniques. Why do we need a beam shape? It can be properly demonstrated with this picture. Let's assume that uh, blue area is a tumor and the reddish area is a critical organ. If we are to treat this tumor and we want 100% dose to the entire tumor and we will be forced to treat with a field that uh, will look like the whitish area if we are to treat with an unshaped B. Which means that delivering 100% dose to the tumor will also amount to 100% dose to the critical organ. But with modern beam shaping, we are able to deliver with beams shaped like just this, delivering 100% dose to the tumor but sparing the organizers. This is what the aperture of a beam of a old generation conventional jaw shaped beam would look, would look like, it is a rectangular beam. But with multi leaf collimator, beam shaping to complex shape as this is possible. Even more complex beam shaping are possible with multi leaf collimator. Now we come to the golden question. What actually is IOT? For that, we'll see what conventional radiotherapy is. 
Conventional radiotherapy is any kind of radiotherapy in which within a field uniform dose intensity is deposited. Whereas in intensity modulated radiotherapy, varying dose intensity within a field is possible. So the high intensity areas can be directed towards the tumor and low intensity areas towards the critical organ. This can be explained better with this analogy. Let's assume this picture is a irradiated field. So left hand picture is analogous to the conventional RT where target as well as the critical organ, whether uh, it is target or critical organ within the field is receiving uniform intensity of dose. Let's assume that the color is analogous to intensity of dose. But in uh, IMRT, the, you can see there are different intensity of colors within a field. Just like that, IMRT is possible to, with IMRT it is possible to deposit different intensity dose to different areas within a field. So what is the advantage of doing that? It is not, it is not that IMRT will produce more tumor control than conventional radiotherapy because the tumor is receiving same kind of dose whether you are delivering with IMRT or not. But it is with the advantages with normal tissue sparing. IMRT is able to spare normal structures far better than conventional radiotherapy. So the next advancement is image guided radiotherapy. What actually actually is image guided radiotherapy? It is just another way of delivering an IMRT. It is any kind of IMRT which verifies where the area that we are intended to be treating is uh, verified if it is actually being treated. That is, it is a more accurate way of delivering uh, IMRT. And this verification is done each and every day prior to the treatment using certain imaging devices. Now, it can be either an X-ray where the bone matching is done or a CT scan, we call it cone beam CT scan. Uh, before radiotherapy. It is done with the help of devices like this. These are onboard imaging devices. First picture is a room mounted onboard imaging devices. With patient in the couch in treatment position, these devices take an image, compare it with the planning CT scan and verify accuracy and treat. This one is a gantry mounted imaging device. This is the treatment head, this is the imaging device. So, uh, it's an onboard imaging device uh, which is gantry mounted and verifies the accuracy. By this kind of image guided radiotherapy, we are able to avoid interfraction errors like just say we are treating a prostate cancer and a patient comes to, a part in, to you in a particular day with a full rectum. It will mean that the loaded rectum, the anterior wall of the rectum will come into the field of uh, radiation. So, by, once you find that this, uh, in the image that it is loaded and it is coming into the field of the radiation, you can ask the patient to defecate pass motion and then treat. Such kind of uh, errors can be avoided with image guided radiotherapy. But what about intrafraction radiation? Certain targets is in continuous motion. One example is a lung tumor which is in the apex of the lower level of lung which moves continuously with respiration. Such type of targeting, we need a modern, far modern uh, technology known as 4D CT acquisition. It uh, takes images in every phase of respiration. The 4D CT acquisition is based on an infrared technology. This uh, detects the different phases of respiration based on a system known as real-time position management system which a certain patient's uh, baseline motion profile, the periodicity of breathing is checked. Once breathing comes into a rhythm, the system records the breathing cycle and then we decide which phase of the radiation we are going to breathe. <coughs> this is a breathing pattern of the patient and we most often treat in the mid expiratory or mid inspiratory phase. Once the system recognizes that the patient's breathing pattern is in that phase of where it is adequate to be treated, then only the treatment will be delivered. It will take much more time, 
but it will be highly precise. So I have mentioned different techniques of prediction uh, the delivery modalities, but the steps involved in the RT delivery is most often same one, which would be first once we decide the patient is going for RT, first step will be patient's positioning and immobilization. Then we acquire a CT image, transfer the image to the treatment planning system and the target body delineation and a 3D model of the patient and the organs will be generated. This will act as the patient's virtual phantom on which the planning will be done. And uh, plan then the planning, then dose distribution will be, the computer will deliver you a dose distribution. We verify that the tumor is getting maximum dose and uh, the normal structure doses are very well avoided. Once we have an adequate plan, before delivering patient, we have a quality assurance program. We uh, check in a phantom that whether the plan can be planned, uh, plan can be uh, delivered with accuracy in a virtual phantom. And once we have a good quality, we deliver treatment. That will be the end of my presentation. Thank you.